it's like, as I keep saying over and over again every time I seem to pick up the book, it's like he's speaking to our generation, this time that we live in, that God is actually reaching out through the writings and through the person himself and speaking directly to our hearts to remind us of those things that are profitable to us. And Tozer was called a pastor's pastor that he shared and he was called a, a minor prophet he called himself and of all those that i see with that title that claim it i have never found one like tozer because everyone else no offense to them as much as they're into some movement that they like to put titles in front of their names i don't see them as prophets of god but tozer who seemed to be treating himself as less of a man called himself a minor prophet turned out to be one of the greater realities in our generation of someone whom God has used in that office and to this day his words still ring true and we find them accurate to what we need to hear from God today as we listen to his voice and as he speaks to us directly absence of repentance brings spiritual uncertainty in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. 2 Timothy 2.25 The man who is seriously convinced that he deserves to go to hell is not likely to go there, while the man who believes that he is worthy of heaven will certainly never enter that blessed place. I use the word seriously to accent true conviction and to distinguish it from mere nominal belief. It is possible to go through life believing that we believe while actually having no conviction more vital than a conventional creed inherited from our ancestors or picked up from a general religious notion current in our social circle. If this creed requires that we admit our own depravity, we do so and feel proud of our fidelity to the Christian faith. But from the way we love, the way we praise and pamper ourselves, it is plain enough that we do not consider ourselves worthy of damnation. The poor quality of Christian faith and the uncertainties that mark the lives of a host of church members grow out of modern evangelistic seems absence of real repentance. So too, the absence of repentance is the result of an inadequate view of sin and sinfulness held by those who present themselves in the inquiry room. No fears, no grace, said Bunyan. Though there is not always grace where there is fear of hell, yet, to be sure, there is no grace where there is no fear of God. For the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, and they that lack the beginning have neither the middle nor the end. Wow. <laughs> where do you go with that one? It's like, you know, in a certain reality, in the Jesus movement, we were so in love with Jesus that in some ways that love overcame our fear of God and we went for repentance because we desired to be loved and to earn so to speak the joy of the Lord and to make him proud of us and in some ways that was good and in some ways bad because it gave birth to a new philosophy in Christianity that is if we just keep presenting the love then that person, because they love God so much, will choose to please the person they're loving. And in one aspect of grace, I would agree, but in other aspects, I would disagree, because we don't always present to the person who's making a choice, who's making a decision to actually give over their life to God. We don't actually tell them the full consequences of what they're doing, so we make grace cheap even though we tell a person that it cost Jesus Christ his life we don't tell the person it's going to cost them their life and then we let people go about in a religious world constantly looking for a bless me God and a sugar daddy as opposed to Jesus who says on that day when they say to me Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name have we not cast out demons in thy name have we not done all manner of things in your name? And he says, I will say to them, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. 
I never knew you. The reality of that absolute statement from God, from the Son of God, from the Son of Man whom we say we love, ought to cause a certain amount of trepidation or fear in us because we would not want to come to a place of so much self-delusion and self-deception that Jesus himself denies knowing us. That is a reality of what salvation given freely without any cost will make a person choose to go their religious way thinking they're fine and one day find that they were not in relationship with God but that they had a wonderful perfect religious system that catered to their needs made them feel content in their absence of any real conviction of their own sinfulness and their own desperate need for God on a daily basis. If you think you're righteous, you're not. And whenever you look at any of the men of God that you see around you and you consider them as holy men, they're not. They have sinned today. They have. There is no doubt. Ask God how he might reveal that to you and then read the Sermon on the Mount and you may find that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. So we all have need of grace and mercy daily and forgiveness of sins continually that God has provided in His Son as we have relationship with Him. Because in the end, we all shall stand before God and give an account for every idle word, much less every deed and action that we performed. So I pray that your turning to God, which is what repentance is, was one of recognizing that you're giving your entire being to God and that He can do with you as He chooses. So, if you've never heard an accurate depiction of what salvation is, it's not just saving you from hell and preparing you for heaven, but it's giving your life to Jesus. And that means you have no rights. You have no free will. You have no self-determination. You are now God's object to choose to do with and to... and for Him to will for His good pleasure that you are there at His created being in the place that you are so that He can use you or choose not to use you as He sees so fit. Now the beauty of it is God is love. So because He is, He is determined that if you do choose to give over your entire life to Him, His love will be so manifest in you that it will fill you with completeness, that you won't feel as though you've lost anything by giving up your rights to yourself, but that you'll feel like you've gained everything because he's given you a freedom in him that you could never understand except that you come to a oneness with God. And in the oneness there is no determination of who's greater or lesser because they're one with God.